Hi everyone, how's it going? So I just want to do a quick video today, a little update on where I'm at with the modular computer design, uh, modular laptop idea that I had. So here's the machine. As you can tell, it's probably quite heavy, which is a little bit heavy, um, mainly because of the battery. I'm using a large 200 watt hour battery in this. Um, and a large 16-inch screen as well, which I've recovered from an old laptop. You can see it's made out of plywood and connects. So, yeah, it's not the most streamlined of things, but the point of this video is for the rough idea of what you can do. Let's open it up and see how it works. So, there we go. Now, I'll bring the camera down a little bit in a minute, but um, first you can see it's a full working computer. Um, let me just switch it on here. Also as well with this current setup, this screen requires a lot of power because it's an old laptop screen and it's not the most uh, streamlined thing, it has a separate video controller here, which whereas laptop would usually have that embedded into the motherboard, this has a separate board here which controls the screen. Um, but with a portable screen, you will not have to worry about anything like this, it would just be the screen on the back and then you'd have your connectors and you could power it from a power bank or whatever. Um, this is using a 12 volt power bank here to make it work. So, you will back in. There we go, and uh, let me just log in here. So currently I've got, like I said, I've got a 200 watt hour battery here, which is powering the Intel NUC. This is the AI5 INH. Now, the reason I got this one is because it's slightly more powerful than the Bean Canyon one. Now, you do lose a little bit with that in that it hasn't got any RAM upgradeability, and it's a little chunkier than if you got the slimline Bean Canyon ones. Um, but I found that it's 15 to 20 percent more powerful than the Bean Canyon um, graphics, and also still only runs at about 40 watts or so. So I, I just really wanted that extra bit of horsepower in there. Um, but you could um, get a, the slimmer model nook for an overall smaller design, and with a smaller power bank as well. Anyway, so yeah, as you can see, here's it up and running. So everything in this is completely interchangeable. You could change the screen on there. You could change the computer change the keyboard for a smaller keyboard and you can change the power bank as well so if anything you wanted to upgrade you could do that and with that saying you can make the whole thing a lot smaller if you had a smaller screen um, a smaller nook, a smaller keyboard, a smaller power bank so you could do the whole thing with a lot smaller components which I might show in a future video um, but yeah the whole thing is completely interchangeable anyway let's do a couple of benchmarks here so I'll just do quickly do one benchmark that uh, is quite popular now there's no tricks in making this run. This is all running on the Intel NUC itself. Now the battery, this is the uh, Max Oak 50,000 milliamp hour battery, which is a huge battery and might be a bit overkill for a lot of uses and it's very heavy. Um, but it can run GTA 5 here. It can run it for a good four, four and a half hours. But yeah, obviously if you're building this, if you want to make something like this yourself, you'd choose something like a 20,000, 25,000 milliamp hour battery with a 19 and a half volt output or a 20 volt output and you get a good, a good few hours on it so maybe two hours of GTA 5 and something like well six to eight hours of video playback so yeah here's GTA 5 running okay, first person mode uh, let me just run the benchmark so you can see and there we go a full 50 frames a second well between 45 and 50 with little dips here and there, but very playable nonetheless. Now the screen looks a little bit dirty, that's mainly because this is a 10 year old laptop screen from an old Sony Vio laptop. Now I haven't incorporated any speakers into this one, um, I'm, there's a headphone socket on the front of the Nook as well as a headphone socket on the HDMI uh, controller here uh, that you can get an output from, but you could very easily get some small speakers and you can incorporate into the box somehow. Um, now I'm just going to show you how portable the system is uh, by taking it outside. So I'm just going to get my assistant to help me with that. It's just totally portable for now. Um, but I am looking at smaller screens, smaller batteries, smaller keyboard. Oh, it's going over. Um, in terms of cable management, I've done the best I can to keep it as tidy. So you got your one wire there from your HDMI going to your screen controller, your wire going to the battery, 
And then I've got another wire here, this is for, like I said, the battery for the screen. Um, but if you had a USB powered screen, then you could just power that with a, a similar cable coming out and powering that. Down there. Yeah, so the main downsides of a setup like this is that it might be a problem sometimes to check your battery. Now, right now, I'd have to pull this keyboard out, maybe put a mirror here or something like that, just so I can see how many lights are left on the side of the battery. You don't have the integration of the battery monitor in, in something there, so you might need a timer or something like that. But that can be bypassed with, with this battery in particular. You can run a pass through for it, so you can have the whole thing being charged up whilst being used at the same time so you won't have to worry about it being, uh, the battery running out. Okay, another downside is obviously the bulkiness, the thickness of it and that's just because obviously every component has its own case. The Intel NUC has a case uh, for itself, the keyboard has a case for itself, the battery has a case for itself. Everything, you know, you, you start putting all the separate bits together, it's going to be a little bit thicker uh, because of that. Um, but that's just because of where it is. Like I said, it's a prototype stage. This is just a proof of concept in that, you know, I'm not trying to sell anything here. I'm not trying to say, you know, buy this, buy this um, Kinex monstrosity from me. I'm just saying that, you know, if you were looking at having a semi-portable um, workstation or laptop style computer at home, maybe, you know, for a similar price, if not more, maybe slightly more expensive than just a regular laptop, but you get all the benefits of having complete upgradability. And I mean complete upgradability. Not only that is that, everything uh, can be used separately. So, so if I wanted to run something else in this screen, so I could run a games console through that screen, or for example, so the camera from the, the feed from this camera itself. There we go. <laughs> so now we get the Hall of Mirrors, the classic Hall of Mirrors effect. Whoa! Whereas with a regular laptop, unless you're using a capture card and you get the delay, um, there isn't really any way of having a HDMI input this simple in the screen. Whereas if your screen's a modular portable screen anyway, then you can put whatever you want through the screen. You have complete flexibility. And then, for example, if I wanted to take the computer and use it in something else, like my live stream setup, there we go. And we have that now for something else. If I want to use the battery for something else, or change the battery out. Again, it's a case of literally just <laughs> taking it out and putting a new one in. Again, this isn't the most ideal setup uh, for this situation, and not for everyone either. People that want something really ultra compact, and um, they want a super sexy, super slim uh, MacBooks, they still exist. But the thing is, three or four years down the line, if you want to upgrade it, you can't. Whereas something like this, something along these lines of separate components, which all do a separate job but work entirely well together, you know, it's, you've now got a possibility of going, okay. Sell this, you know, and the good thing about Intel Nux is they tend to hold their price. You know, you buy one and then a few years down the line, it's worth a good proportion of what you bought it for. Whereas a laptop, you know, they tend to lose their price very quickly. And then obviously you got in terms of if anything breaks, it's very easy to just take the old one out, you know, send it off for repairs and put a new one in. So there's all these different aspects I think is really worthwhile, especially as you're looking to the future of sustainability and, and also you know, people having control over their products. It's very much the opposite of what Apple is going for with super slim and sexy. But I think this is a very good option for a lot of people. And you know, the best thing is that everyone can create their own, uh, their own shell in their own way. You know, I'm really excited to see if people take this idea and a 3D printer case, um, make one out of Lego. The, the, whole, the whole thing is completely interchangeable and the whole world is your oyster and that's the best thing about it I think. Also this is only just now possible because this is something that wasn't really feasible in the last five years or so or maybe it was but it was very expensive to do so. So for something similar five years ago it would have cost you a lot more and wouldn't have been nearly as useful. Now there are products on the market coming out now that do say they're modular but they don't have quite the same complete exchangeability. Now they're modular in that that their company can create new parts for it in the future. So like large gaming laptops, you can then get a new graphics card for it, but only a specific graphics card by, made by that specific company. You know, <laughs> you have to buy a very expensive piece of kit and then only buy future expensive piece of kits from that same manufacturer. It's only now that this computer and this series of computers, you know, they're running at, you know, between 10 and 40 watts or so. 
but they have the same power as a laptop. Now it's only happened in the last three years or so to get the power draw that low, but also have the same um, usability. So this is why I'm, I'm, I'm showing this idea because we're not at a point yet where you can have something super slim and super easy and um, super user friendly, but we're not far off. And this is my proof of concept of that. Okay, anyway, that's enough of my rambling today. Uh, thank you very much, uh, I'll catch you later. And one last thing, just in case you're wondering. Yep, the whole thing does fit inside a backpack. Now I wouldn't recommend it with this setup, but with a more secure setup with, um, you know, be able to slide the components in and, you know, being more made out of a stronger material, you know, it's definitely something <laughs> that works. So even this large uh, 40 centimeter by 30 centimeter prototype, yep, it is backpackable. <laughs> so you could take it to your local coffee shop and get some strange looks while you work on it. While you're sat next to a MacBook Pro user, and you got this big chunky thing, so yeah, it's totally uh, portable in that sense. <laughs>